What's up guys? Welcome back to the Team Soul Home Circus Live video. Today we are diving on in once again to another DB video. We are going to be seeing 60 cards going up against 50 cards here. Uh, you know, we see a copy of Rise of Full Height. We're going to be making these guys go first. Um, we see Rise of Full Height, a copy of Paleozoic, Oilinoid, a Time Morganite, a copy of Morella, and a copy of Wabaku. We are very well versed for Tempai, I guess. And then over here, we do see Double Wolf and 50 a Bistia Lubelion, a copy of Judgment Dragon, as well as a White Dragon. Uh, we do see pretty decent rating here and with lots of experience, as well as lots of experience over here. So it's going to be a pretty good duel, I'm assuming. We're going to be seeing Lubelion being activated, searching for a copy of the Magnemut. And uh, yeah, we're going to have to just banish the copy of Lubelion with that Magnemut there. Kind of, uh, kind of letting us play during our opponent's turn, hopefully by searching for a copy of a Ball Drake, yeah, I was gonna say there's not much we can do there. Just pass the turn with a double wolf and a copy of White Dragon in the hand as bricks alongside that Judgment Dragon. Only one playable card there, which is kind of crazy. But we're gonna be seeing Time Morganite being activated, and then we just set five pass. Uh, we draw a Needlebug Nest, by the way, for turn. So we're gonna be milling a bunch of cards. I'm assuming this is just Paleo, maybe with Grass in the deck as well. Kind of cool that we were playing that. Uh, but now we're gonna be drawing two cards every single turn, which is pretty nice. But we're going to go battle phase and attack for 25. Still not able to do very much here. We draw into a copy of Felice. Essentially a wolf. A pretty much of a brick. We just take the damage and we just pass turn on that. We're going to activate the effect of Morella. And we do draw off the time we're going to... That is, you know, a mandatory effect. Uh, or I guess a mandatory resolution of effect now. So we do draw into another copy of Morella. Honestly, I wouldn't say that's cheating because we... we we want to know our draw before we activate a card. So we're just going to activate Morella here. And then we send a copy of Rollback. We activate Needlebug Nest. And then we chain a copy of Morella to summon itself out. And we dump five here. Dumping a copy of the Soldier Dragons. A copy of Griefing. A cop two copies of Canadia. And a copy of Rise of Full Height here. Uh, yeah, this is an interesting deck. This is literally just like Paleo. We're going to rise a full height on the Magnemut. Chain the copy of the Canelia to summon itself out. Then we're going to go up into a copy of the Opinia. Uh, it's unaffected by monster effects. You can, you can activate Paleozoic trap cards from your hand. If this card is a trap card as material, you can attach one and add a Paleo trap. So this one, the Searchers. Interesting. We're going to see them search for a copy of the uh, Lean. Whatever. I'm not even going to try pronouncing this. It just returns one of the Banish cards. Then we're going to activate the Morella. We're going to chain the other Morella here and uh, dump in the copy of Elemental Burst. Okay. Okay. This is going to be copied off the the copy of Rollback to just destroy all the opponent's cards. Is that what we're doing here? We're going to see Wabaku. And we're going to chain another copy of Morella to summon herself out. Then we're going to go up into a copy of Totally Awesome here. Battle Phase. Didn't we already say we... Okay, double defense. Defense comes here to end a turn. You can banish this card. Okay, so it really just does nothing. Can this not be destroyed? Did we not just... What's going on here? Take no battle damage. Okay, we activate Wabaku there to make so that we can't die. So we can just go up into a Zeus. Okay. Then we just set two cards and pass. Interestingly enough, we're going to go track and then we do chain a copy of Totally Awesome. Totally Awesome is going to put itself back into the extra deck. You know, leaving the trap cards in the graveyard here. We're going to then normal summon the copy of Baldrake and then special summon with the copy of Wild Burst by banishing the copy of Magnumat. This is not what I assume we're going to be seeing. We go up into a Chaos Angel, Chaos Angel, as well as the copy of White. Try to banish the copy of Zeus. We're not going to wipe the field. Uh, you know, we used a White. Therefore, it is unaffected by our opponent's monsters here. We kind of don't want to lose our own cards. We're going to go Fiend Griefing. Shuffle into the graveyard and then send one Fiend. Oh, you can send one Fiend. So it doesn't even actually need to send it. Then we're going to activate the effect of the trap to summon itself out. And we're going to send a copy of the... Uh, Blackjack here. Blackjack can then also mill to reveal some traps, which we are going to be seeing. We banish first. 
we see a grass is greener here so we are playing that we have wabaku and a copy of rollback there so i'm assuming we're going to be putting the wabaku on the top of the deck to kind of let us protect ourselves we're going to go battle phase attack and that's what's going to resolve we're going to be seeing the blackjack banish to put the wabaku and we do draw a copy of grass and a rollback i forgot the double draw off the uh off the copy of Morganite myself, but they remembered, and we do only have one card in their deck, so we could activate that, you know, sending one card to the graveyard, but that's not going to be doing very much. We're going to banish Rollback to put Needlebug Nest, milling cards once again. And so now Grass is just going to be absolutely useless here. We see double copies of Trap Tricks, a Morganite, a copy of Soldier Dragons, and the Reasoning. I don't know why we're doing this. Why do we want to play Soldier Dragons? What does it do for us? I guess it gets us into the Paleozo Paleozo cards. You know, the searcher here. We're gonna set and just pass turn on this. We're gonna be seeing a normal summon of a Kaleido. This guy's just opening up all bricks. You know, his deck is just bricks are us. We're gonna battle phase and attack. We're gonna activate Wabaku, make sure we don't die. We're gonna activate the effect, summon with a copy of the Morella once again. And then we just pass turn. We're gonna activate Desires, banishing our deck. Holy, we draw into trap tricks as well. We see a balance of judgment. Wow, we just want to draw the like, draw dot deck. What do we banish here? We see two desires banished. We see a time morganite. We see uh, double copies of the druma cannon and then three, four, uh, four paleozo cards be banished there, which is very unfortunate for us. We then activate the effect of lean to put back the rollback to the graveyard. Uh, we're going to chain the copy of Keldo here. Trying to banish Needlebug Nest and both Paleos to this. Uh, we're then going to chain the copy of Olenoid, targeting the copy of rollback on the field. And then we chain the Morella to summon herself out. Just keeping one on, you know, in the graveyard. We're going to be banishing... No, they get they get banished off. Oh yeah, they do get shuffled back into the deck. Okay, that's pretty fine. And then go up into a copy of the Olfinia once again, being able to search for a copy of Thanomiscus, and this can get rid of the copy of Chaos Angel. And then I put the Chaos Angel, and we have to discard a card first. But we, yeah, okay, we're gonna discard the copy of Rollback. We're gonna summon the copy of Morella. It is twelve hundred. We're gonna be able to attack for 12 we set two more and just pass turn like that so we're going to activate the effect of phoenix engraver once again we play multiple tracks here interestingly enough uh, we could just go track search for a copy of another engraver or a lurry and discard any one of these cards here uh, you know we don't need these in the hands uh but most likely going to be we could search for weist here that's actually crazy this is going to make it so we discard the copy of wolf or the Felice. We probably discarded the copy of Felice here. Or then summon out the copy of Dark by banishing the copy of Felice. Whisk can activate the effect, putting back the copy of Wolf to summon itself out. And then we're gonna be milling two. We see Wolf summon itself out because we played it on the top of the deck. And we go with Trap Tricks here, chaining the copy of the Dinomiscus, summoning itself out. And we're gonna be banishing the Needle Bug Nest to send five once again. We're gonna be activating the Needle Bug Nest, flipping up that copy of or summoning out another copy here of the guys. And we do mill. A copy of Balance of Judgment again, a tantalizing tomb is essentially just a draw two by banishing or discarding a uh, normal trap. A Wabaku, a Blackjack, and a copy of the Magnolia Soul. So this card is really cool. It's a trap card, or it's a trap related card, I should say. It's a monster. If it's supposed to by a trap effect, uh, you can summon itself from the graveyard, and then it is a synchro monster, or it is a tuner. Uh, so you can sync your summon to like Herald of the Arclight with this. Because uh, immediately, if your opponent or during your opponent's battle phase, you go for a herald, and with, with this card, uh, you know, you can go for a herald here, and then you can actually protect your stuff with the copy of Rise of Full Height, so they can't attack into the herald, which is really nice. Um, and like the same thing with your monsters and attack, you know, you can just put them and make them attack into this, so you can summon up these like pretty freely. But just some cool interactions there. We see the. Uh, soul as well as the blackjack going to be milling three cards and summoning itself out and we see a canadia we put on the top of the deck as well as a morella so choosing one of those two most likely and then we're going to be drawing the other two on resolution we're going to banish in the copy of 
the rollback to copy to copy elemental burst. We're uh, we're wiping our opponent's field here. <laughs> and so we see the entire field go away. Dark is going to be able to search for a copy of white. And that's just going to really, yeah, Engraver's going to put back the copy of white to summon itself out. We can then link up into the copy of Requiem. And then Requiem can bring out a copy of the Engraver here. Uh, now we can go quick. Engraver equip go up into a copy of princess, but that's not going to do very much for us now We already summoned out. No, no, we already did that with the other engraver You can't uh, you can't do it twice per turn uh, Yeah, you, you we put back the white to summon out the first time We're going to a pilgrim here and then they activate the effect. It's just gonna mill five cards I mean, yeah, you definitely can't do that, but whatever We're gonna be going up into this and we do mill a copy of Medora, a copy of Lurry here, and then two Bistials and a Solar Recharge. And we're gonna be milling five cards on our opponent. We chain the copy of Blackjack to set the, set the copy of Morella here. And then we do mill the copy of Soldiers, Canadia, a Blackjack, and another copy of Soul and a Griefing. Uh, you know, nine cards left in deck by the way, and we are drawing two every turn. We're gonna see Sorinir dump a copy of most likely the Lubelli onto the graveyard. Um, and like yeah, we're gonna summon up the copy of white by banishing the dark. Link away into a copy of SP. SP is gonna be able to banish the copy of Soul there. And we're gonna be protecting a rise of full height on the soul. Make sure they can't destroy the rest of their monsters by battle here. We do draw two, which is a card demise and another needle bug nest. We're gonna go up into a copy of the big guy here, unaffected by our opponent's monster effects. This is all the Paleozoics. Once per turn, if your trap card is sent from your spell card, or spell and trap card is the graveyard, except for your damage step, you can excavate the top card of your deck if it's a trap card add to your hand. Otherwise, it's a graveyard. If this card, during your player's turn, it has a trap XYZ material, you can detach one, then target one card on the field, destroy it. So this just lets us destroy the copy of SP, and then activate the Morella. We can then summon back, or put back the copy of Soul, summon with the copy of the Lean here, dumping the copy of yeah, what the heck is going on? We're going to put back the Tantalizing Tune to put back the copy of Rollback here. We're going to activate the effect of the Alfinia to search. We're then going to activate the effect of the Lean to put back. Morella is going to summon itself out. And this is just OTK. Putting back Rise of Full Height, I should say. Then Soul is going to activate the effect to summon itself out. And we then overlay for a Totally Awesome. This is going to be 20. So we have 46. Uh, 46 plus. So we have 58 damage here we just have to deal a thousand more we're gonna go battle phase attack leaving them on a thousand we have a totally awesome here and then we can just destroy their entire board once again we're gonna go for a downward and a zeus that's the second zeus we play or did the zeus get bounced back to the extra deck weird we're gonna be seeing a set two and then a pass. We're gonna see Medora put back the Pilgrim Reaper and both rollbacks making it so that our opponent cannot just board wipe us once again. We are then draw a copy of the uh, Dragonling here. We're gonna see the engraver put back to summon itself out. I can't believe they did that twice last turn. Go over to a Requiem, activate the effect of Requiem, summon another copy of engraver. And then we're gonna activate the effect of the Requiem once again. Let's try to equip itself to the engraver. We do chain the copy of the Dinomiscus. Or what's gonna activate the effect? Of Alomaris. Oh, we're gonna activate the Alomaris uh, sending the Dinomiscus from underneath it to pop the copy of Requiem. Therefore, or pop the copy of Engraver, therefore the Requiem cannot equip itself to it. We're then gonna activate the effect of Draggling. This card's absolutely nuts for us. We're gonna be able to summon itself out and then also get hit with a totally awesome there. Totally awesome, we're gonna activate the effect, putting back the opening up to the bottom of the deck. And we do set the copy of Dragon Link because it is it's absolutely crazy. And we just admit defeat on that. You know, we are gonna be losing there. We go battle phase attack. Now it is important to note that the Pilgrim Reaper was kind of illegal there. We shouldn't have seen that being summoned. We can't summon two engravers a turn, but moving on into game number two, we're gonna be seeing the uh, 
pile deck, the Lightsworn Horus now, I guess. Engraver deck going first. We see a copy of Felice, the Wiss, a copy of Imstead, a Solar Recharge, and a copy of Cosmic. So opening up significantly better than we saw last time. You'll know, be able to have Instead send the copy of Felice or Wisp, put it back to the top of the deck can be quite nice. We see Solar Recharge going to be able to uh, discard this Felice here, drawing two cards, uh, and then sending two to the top of the graveyard. And then, of course, over here, you know, we have a 60 card Paleo Pile. Uh, we see a Soldier Dragon, which is just summoning at level twos. We see a Tantalizing Tune Lingus, draw two, discarding the copy Elemental Burst. We see a Wabaku here, a Trap Tricks, and then the Elemental Burst here. Not looking like the greatest hand, maybe, to be honest, I don't really know. Uh, this deck does seem really sick, though. If you guys want me to take it to locals, let me know in the comment section down below. Uh, I do like this. I think that Joshua Smith is playing this deck a bit, but we're going to be seeing main phase one, solar recharge, and then the copy of the Weist search or this just draws two. Okay, yeah, I thought it was a searcher. I thought it was charge. Uh, we're going to draw two, drawing into a copy of chaos space alongside a copy of charge. And then we milled two, sending the copy of, of the King Sark and a Felice to the graveyard here. Uh, it's not set by a monster effect, so you can't special summon this, unfortunately. That's uh, kind of rough, but go Chaos Space, sending the Amstead to search for a copy of Lubellion. And then we're going to go Lubellion effect, searching for a copy of Magnemut. Do we only play one King Stark? Surely not. We're going to see the charge sending three here. We're sending the copy of Soranir Engraver and a copy of the Beast. So Beast can summon itself out. So far, we can't put anything back for an Engraver just yet. We do have the Wist in the hand, so you know if we do normal summon it and link it away, that can be an option for the Engraver. We see a search for a copy of Dragonling, which is going to be the kind of like starter here. We're going to see Soranir as well as the Wolf summon itself out, dumping the copy of Baldrake, interestingly enough. We're going to banish a copy of Baldrake for the Magnemut. Magnemut's going to activate the effect. Yeah, chances are we're not going to be using this during our opponent's turn. Uh, I can't see them touching the extra deck that often other than like Toad. We're then going to Magnemut effect. Lubellion summon itself out by trading the copy of Magnemut. Activate the effect of Regained with the Lubellion here. We're going to go then Dragonling summon itself out. Sending a copy of the Wisp to the Graveyard. Wisp going to activate the effect summon out the copy of Felice. And then we're going to go up into a copy of Seals because the Dragonling is a dragon alongside Lubellion. Quite nice combo here. We can then put back the copy of... Yeah, I guess we also search for the Dragonling here, searching for a copy of Judgment Dragon. We can then link those two away for a copy of the Minerva Synchro. Um, if you send Lightning Monsters from your deck, you will have a different number of Lightsworn Monsters used for this. So we're going to be able to send two, and you can banish four Lightsworn Monsters. And you can send that many. We can just banish one to send one, but we get to put back and then draw one as well, which is really cool. So we're going to be seeing two being sent. We're going to see a wolf and a weist being dropped here. Wolf will then be able to summon itself out. We then get to banish a copy of four here. And we're going to be milling four. We see another copy of Imsteti, a double engravers. That's extremely unfortunate. We're going to have to find a way to banish an engraver just to put it back. Or we can just put back one engraver to summon itself. We can do that, right? Uh, with creative engraver, we can put one other light fiend. So we're going to be putting back one of the engravers to summon itself out so we can have the Requiem search, essentially. But we're going to be seeing the uh, regain put back the copy of Felice uh, to draw into a copy of Keldo there. Not the greatest. We're going to be seeing the Chaos Space put back the Felice to draw as well. Drawing into a Druish Worm. Then we're going to go up a normal summon of the Felice, going up into a copy of the Visus Synchro. Searching for a reframing here, so having a negate now. But we're going to go up into a copy of the Ultima Izoka. When we set this, we're going to be able to set another card. What are we... Or summon out another card here. What are we doing? We're going to have an Omni Negate and an Omni Negate here with the copy of Crystal Wing. I guess it's only a monster negate, but that's going to be absolutely crazy. We're making negates now with this deck. We're going to be seeing Graver put back, summon itself out. Then we're going to be able to go. Yeah, they're just going to admit defeat. They're going to draw a bunch of cards there because they would have been able to draw one for a turn. Draw two off Tantaloon. And yeah, that's absolutely crazy. Uh, they were going to make a um, Desiree there. So they would have had Desiree, the Refrain, as well as a copy of the Crystal Wing. Now, this is all interrupted, but that hand was not even good to start off with. 
uh, which is kind of crazy that we saw that end board there. That's a better end board than Snake Eyes. Um, diving on to game three here, it's going to be all important. We see a pile versus a pile deck. Who is going to open up better? We see a Wabaku over here. We see a Desires, a copy of, Dr of Dragon Maid. The Laundry Dragon Maid here. This is going to be a Water Monster. I don't know if that comes up, but it does send three cards to the graveyard. So it looks like we're just trying to send our cards to the graveyard here at any cost. Uh, we're going to be seeing Blackjack as well as a Canadia. And over here we see an Amsteady, a copy of Cosmic, a, a Safe Bird here, a copy of Chaos Space, and a copy of a Bestial. Now, do you side out Bestials against this deck? What do you actually do here? You know, your Bestials aren't going to do that much. We saw them keep the Baldrake in the deck the last time. That's just why they most likely dumped it with a Sorinir, because they know it's not going to be useful for them. So they want to dump as much as they can uh, to essentially make their draws better, or mills better in this case, I guess. But like here, we're going to draw two cards. We're going to send three. We have a Blackjack in the hand, not the greatest. We have a Wabaku to protect ourselves, but like, we get to have Cosmic here, another draw off our draw for turn, an Imsteady draw as well if this does resolve. Um, like Lots of cards here are going to be able to let us search. If we have a Banish of a Chaos Space, we could see as well. This could be a very good game. We're going to see Desires Banish. Now this Banish is like 10 Paleos. The game's over, right? We're going to draw two. We draw Time as well as a copy of the Soldier Dragon. So now we have conflicting Normal Summons. You know, three Normal Summons in the hand, not what we're looking for. We do see... Four Paleos being banished, a copy of, of Desires, which we are probably fine with. The same thing with a copy of Reasoning. You know, they'd most likely just call two. Uh, we do see a Tantalizing Tune gone, as well as one Rollback. That could be very important. You know, Rollbacks being a target for most things here. We're going to see a Normal Summon of a copy of Soldier. And then when your opponent activates a card effect, you can summon a lower level 2 Dragon from your deck. We're going to activate in the time, letting us Normal Summon... Uh, as well, a uh, normal summon again, essentially, as well as uh, being able to draw two during the next uh, next turn. We get the normal summon with the copy of the um, blackjack here. So choosing blackjack over a laundry maid, this is going to at least guarantee us a trap, I guess, uh, as well as like a draw two if you want. But we're going to go blackjack banishing, and we see. Judgment, Greener, and Karuma, Druma Cannon here. So probably sending the Druma Cannon, you know, definitely not sending the copy of Grass during the next turn, but we could be drawing the Grass there. We set two cards and just pass like that. Sorinir is going to activate, or Druid going to activate the effect on the copy of Blackjack. That's going to be huge here. Uh, I completely forgot about the fact that Blackjack is a dark, going to be essentially cutting them off from that uh, trap. We're going to be seeing the effect of Canadia activate Book of Mooning the Safer right off the bat. We do chain a cosmic on the other. We're gonna chain the copy of uh, Soldier Dragons here. And they do they chain the Wabaku? We do chain the Wabaku on No, just, yeah, it's not on anything. I keep thinking of Rise of Full Height. They're gonna take no damage here, but they do get to lose their copy of Wabaku. Very good. We're gonna see the M Steady activate the effect, and we're gonna be chaining the copy of the Solar Dragon, so another copy of itself. So just, like, just walling up at this point. They can't take damage. They do draw into a copy of Keldo. We're going to go King Sark, dumping the copy of Keldo. Search for, also to dump a copy of Happy. We then summon up the copy of Imsteady as well as summon the copy of Happy here. And we're going to be linking away for a copy of Moon. We know how this goes. We're soaring. is going to be sending the copy of the Soldier Dragon here. Don't think it necessarily matters. We're going to go up into a copy of Requiem. And now we have the full Fiendsmith combo. We're going to be seeing the Requiem equipped. And then we're going to go up to a copy of the Princess. We're going to act for the effect here of the King Sark. Sending the copy of a spell. This will be able to trigger uh, the copy of Princess. Letting us draw a card. Um, or if a monster is in the graveyard. So it's actually not going to trigger the Princess there. I wonder if we're going to catch that. We're going to send a copy of him steady. And we're going to attempt to draw Princess. They do let that resolve. That's huge. It has to be a monster that sent this. If a monster is sent for the hand to the graveyard, I fit a card or effect. I didn't know that either. I thought that it was just if a card is sent to the graveyard. But, you know, the more you know, that's two little misplays or cheats, whatever you want to call it, from this guy over here. Ball Drakes can activate the effect, targeting a copy of the Judgment Dragon. They're going to be able to put the Judgment Dragon back to the bottom of the deck and draw a card. We draw into a Solar Recharge. We're then going to put the effect. Requiem back into the deck with the copy of 
of the engraver and we're gonna go battle phase we take no battle damage and our monsters can't be destroyed by battle so there was really no point of doing that but go up into a copy of caesar and then we're gonna go up into an sp sp can yeah i guess we didn't use an extra deck monster so we just go up into a caesar here caesar will stop the traps um but we do draw into two cards which will be a needlebug nest and a copy of olenoid we're going to link up into an sp of our own act for the effect of sp target the copy of caesar chain the sp we just chain the sp on our sp and you can do face downs can you no you can't it has to be face up uh so now we go can't okay <laughs> kind of funny we're gonna go sp on the sp and the sp sp went on the solar dragon and itself and then it's like this is gonna be able to banish yeah so oh we we did on our soldier dragon and their card interestingly you know i thought maybe you want to have level twos in the field to go up but oh well we're gonna see soldier or soldier dragon laundry dragon made being normal summoned here milling three we see a rise of full height a desires so all three desires have now been gone and a copy of fiendish griefing in the graveyard not the greatest here uh we're gonna go battle phase attack i feel like we we knew this was safer right I guess we can't attack directly, so it does not matter. We're gonna see setting two cards, and we just pass on this. We're gonna be seeing the soldiers and the SP return, and that's going to be shuffling back the Keldo here. To put all the traps in the graveyard back into the deck, making sure they do not get any type of uh, effects there. Do we have, even have rollback? We don't. We're gonna be seeing the effect of Olenoid gonna be activated here, targeting the copy of King Sark, making it so that we just do not get to use it. Uh, we do not want those imp steadies and the copy of happy to summon themselves back out at whatever cost so we're going to be seeing sp target sp and S sp we're going to sp target the copy of itself and the laundry dragon made there leaving their sp on the field and then we're going to go engraver effect put back the moon to summon itself out and we're going to chain needle bug nest we're going to chain the effect of the uh Paleo summon itself out, and we do dump. Do we dump one more here? No, we can't. That was it. We do dump a copy of Canadia, a copy of Elemental Burst, the Trap, a Druma Cannon, and a Balance of Judgment as well. Uh, Soul, yeah, we're going to see itself summon itself out here. And I mean, this is going to be able to let us Synchro Summon during our opponent's turn. We're going to go up into another Engraver. We're going to go Requiem Equip, then we're going to go Engraver Effect, send the copy of the Soul, which is going to banish itself because of its own effect. We then normal summon the copy of Lurry going up into a sequence here. This is going to let us go up into a Desiree. And we can then equip the sequence to the Desiree after we go battle phase. Okay. We're going to take the Desiree damage. Then we're going to see sequence attach itself. And then during the end phase, we're going to see Laundry Dragon made as well as the SP come back. And we just draw for turn here. We do draw double. This is going to let us draw two cards kind of good but we need to find a way to get rid of that desiree huh. i wonder if we play typhon because we could go typhon this doesn't gain an attack does it it doesn't look like it does okay so we can go typhon and then go battle phase attack over it and then they'd have like this would actually you can tar you put this back to the extra deck target one card in the graveyard i guess you could do the typhon it's not going to necessarily matter uh they could just yeah so we're gonna go tantalize and tune send for cost trying to draw two that's going to get negated for sure right yeah we see them negate both they can't chain sp because it doesn't target of course they were final resolution of it we're gonna go into a Typhon here. So yeah, they play Typhon. You definitely just don't do that. You slap on Typhon, go battle phase, attack into the copy of Desiree. Um, let that die, put that back. It's gonna like bounce back your copy of Typhon, whatever. Does not matter, this is not a quick effect, so you can't just bounce the copy of SP. Uh, but yeah, like you just wanna get that draw two. Like you need the draw two at this point. There's nothing else that you have going for yourself. Like you have to rely on the draw two. You go battle phase attacking the sp 
Uh, I guess we just don't want that draw too. We're gonna activate the effect, bouncing back with Desiree. So then putting this in defense position and just passing. This also works, but we're just not gonna get a draw two here. And then you just put back and summon itself out. Like we're just gonna be able to go full Phoenix with combo every single turn. Like it does not matter. Desiree, we're gonna go up into the copy of the Requiem, go up into another copy of Engraver. I mean, yeah, I put back all the engravers, so like it's not gonna matter here. We're gonna then go Engraver equip. We're gonna go the Engraver, send the copy of Requiem to then send the copy of Typhon. We go Battle Phase, attack here, and like we're gonna set one and just draw two. Now we have a copy of Cosmic to deal with anything here, uh, any like little cards we do set, so it, it's gonna be a uphill battle here. We double set, and then we're gonna be seeing Cosmic banish the copy of Fiend the Three thing. And we just pass turn here. We do see a Dragon Link finally. So we're going to be activating Solar Recharge, discarding to draw two, dumping two. Uh, and then we see a Wolf being drawn and a White. We do have Darks in the Graveyard, so we can banish to continue. We also can put back the Summon itself out. But like at this point, this is going to also be able to search. Uh, we're just going to get game here like this. We're going to be seeing the Dragon Link search for a copy of Judgment Dragon. Summon up the copy of White, banishing, and we're going to go up into a copy of the Chaos Angel. Chaos Angel is going to be banishing the monster. And then we just go Battle Phase after we summon up the copy of Dark. And this should just be game. Yeah, with the Engraver summon out. And at that point, we just passed. Yeah. So they do draw two here, which kind of shows our draw. So if we would have went the Typhon, like we do lose here. If we went Typhon on the SP, went battle phase, attacked with the Typhon into the copy of uh, the Desiree, we would have drawn into a copy of Blackjack and the copy of Fiend Griefing. We would have set Fiend Griefing here. Uh, I guess, yeah, so we would have done that. They would have probably bounce back or send the copy of would they would have sp on the field we don't really care about that so we set the copy of i mean if they do bounce can we, we can't normal summon the term he uses right yeah so i guess we just have a copy of blackjack alongside a copy of being griefing here um but we draw into these two. They would have to like, I mean, they're gonna save their cosmic because fiend griefing doesn't do too much. But like, you'd be able to fiend griefing shuffle back their engraver so they just don't have the engraver to summon itself back out again. Um, and then like, they don't have like they had their requiem in the or not the requiem, but yeah, they had the requiem in the graveyard, so they wouldn't be able to put back that to summon up the other copy of the engraver. So they're gonna be forced to draw into a engraver here if we would have been able to do that. Um, and like we do, well, that would have been the third blackjack. So we can't really do that. Uh, we couldn't send a fiend, which is fine. But we would have stopped the engraver summons. That would have stopped a bunch of different, like we would never be able to make chaos angel. They'd have an SP on the field and that's it. Uh, we would have set these two. Our opponent would be able to chain to that at some point. But we can just chain the needle bug nest as well as like, we were never going to activate Thanomiscus, but we can just chain send five and like at that point we would just have the game like we definitely misplayed so we see them at defeat here and we do draw we would have okay we're gonna be seeing do they draw any more we do draw two more okay we draw one more so we would have dumped these five and uh yeah we have dumped these five four plus one more so it wouldn't have really done much for us but we could have summoned back out different bodies uh we wouldn't be able to act for the down at any point of time but like you see a little bit of a misplay there definitely some cool decks you know we do see that the pile of horus light sworn chaos cards and graver cards do get the win here uh, if you guys did watch, enjoy watching the video, let me know in the comment section down below. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. I do like doing DB videos because it does show off a different decks that I can't normally show off at locals. But if you guys are watching, let me know in the comment section down below. Don't forget to stay safe. Peace.